so everyone, just in case you're unfamiliar, first of all, I'm um, Kira from Taylor Brands, where we help you launch your business and look professional online in just a few clicks. And today we are so excited to be joined by Simona Ferretti, who is going to give an amazing webinar. I had a peek at the deck beforehand, um, and I can tell you, you guys are going to love it. And I, I know that you are because I already see 150 people in the room which means everyone's super excited about uh, product photography. And um, and yeah, I'll let you go ahead and get started. Thank and, you so uh, much, first of all, to all the team of Taylor Brands, Kira, for the presentation. And I'm gonna go ahead for turning, with turning my screen on. Okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, in this kind of like 45 minutes slash an hour, I really would like to go in depth and talk about the power of mobile photography. Because very often we don't understand the power of this thing that we have in our pocket. Whatever phone you have, even if you have an older model, you can really increase your business, your freelance, your online presence, and, and has a lot of benefit. We're going to dive. Uh, we're going to see them later. In the first part, I'll talk about a little bit about my story, so how photography changed my life, and then we are going to understand why this is a great potential. What are the, the potential benefits? And I'm gonna also break some false belief uh, about photography. And then I'm gonna show you what could be an ideal setup for product photography and how you can set up your smartphone. So the right settings, the right apps, how to do the right lighting, and some useful rules that can really enhance the level of your photos. And then we're gonna talk about some helpful tools and some extra apps that can make your life even easier. So let's start by by me, like I'm, I'm a 96, so I'm 25 now. And at the age of 12, I had the first kind of touch at Photoshop. And it was, I really fell in love with this tool that can really, really make everything from zero. So from a photo, you can transform it and create whatever you have in your mind. Then in 2010, I got my first GoPro and I started making kind of random videos with random edits, like everyone does when, when you get a GoPro. And then in 2015, I graduated from IT. That means that I had already kind of a touch, a feeling of what was the creative world and the kind of IT uh, editing with software like Photoshop and videos and stuff. Then I decided to go into modeling. So I moved to Milan and there is where I really got the first behind the scene look at what really photography can do. So all this kind of lighting goes huge set, 10 people on the team, incredible. But I didn't really like modeling. And in 2017, I moved to Hong Kong on my own. And there is where like everything changed. As you can see from the picture, that is a picture from Hong Kong and it's all skyline. So everything's going up and everything is going down, but there's not much space. That means there's no space to advertise, to have prints. And therefore what happens is that everyone is on social media, especially in the tube, in the, in the metro in Hong Kong, there is connection. So everyone is literally just like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling nonstop. So, okay. Here, there is an opportunity. And now I want to ask you a question. In which restaurants would you like to go? In the first picture or in the second picture? I'm not going to leave you any time because I know already the answer of 95% of you. And the next question is, how do you know that the first one is better than the second one? Or how do you know that it's kind of like more appealing the first one is the second one? Well, the reason is very simple because of photography, because of the photo, because of the quality of these two images. But let me tell you that you don't know that the first photo is actually done, and like this food is made with high quality food. Whereas maybe the second one could have great carrots, the best carrots in the world. But because of the presentation, because how is photographed, then our brain associate already that the first picture is better than the second one and therefore is more appealing. This is, this is a kind of a realization that how you take the picture really make or break the dish, really make or break whatever you're photographing. And when I was in Hong Kong, I really understood this because I was randomly like taking videos and then I was posting on social media. And then from social media, after you know one or two months that I kept posting things, then people were coming to me and asking to create content. And like, you know, we had a few meetings and I remember one meeting, we were sitting in this office and this guy was so excited because he saw my videos and all the things that we're talking about, all the details, blah, blah, blah. And he said like, he started saying like, so how many people do you have in your team? And like, I'm on my own. So what, like, do you need like extra people for holding the camera and blah, blah, blah. And I said like, I actually have only a phone. And he was so disappointed. The meeting finished there. And I'm like, 
what like what is wrong with me like why 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 is that thing like you saw my content i created everything with my phone why now only because you know that i have a phone you don't want to work with me anymore so i kind of like was always refused and was so frustrating so I decided to start, when I was in Hong Kong, to start as a personal trainer working in a gym. And then I saved some money. And then finally, in 2018, I bought my first camera and started doing videos for free, posting them on social media. So try to build a name, try to build that kind of confidence and practicing, practicing, practicing until people really came to me and asked me for content without even any advertising, just because I'm posting on social media. And then as you can see, Let's say I work in, for quite a big brand uh, already while in Hong Kong. And then 2019, I moved to London. During the lockdown in 2020, I opened TikTok and started to focus on educational content, which helped me grow massively. Uh, now on TikTok, I count more than half a million followers. And on Instagram, I'm more than 100K. And I'm, and I'm super excited because when I look at that kind of portfolio that I have, it's like, wow, this is crazy. So working with all these big brands. As I showed you before, now you want to go in that restaurant because of that picture. So with your business, with you as a freelancer, only if you want only to grow on online, you have a new opportunity to grow whatever sales or followers if you want without really investing in expensive resources, just knowing a few things. Now it's game time because one of the biggest uh, beliefs is that you need expensive gear to take great pictures. So I'm gonna show you two pictures at a time and then you need to tell me uh, which one is taken with a phone and which one is taken with a camera or if both of them are taken with a phone or if both of them are taken with a camera. I can't really see the chat. So you kind of need to do, if you wanna write on the chat would be great. Um, but if not, just think on, on, on your, in your mind. So I'm gonna show you the first one. I'm gonna give you five seconds to decide. All right, which one is taken with a camera and which one with a phone or both phone or both camera? Three, two, one. And the answer is left one is camera, right one is phone. Next uh, couple. I'm gonna give you three, two, one, and both with phone. Yes, 100% guarantee. Next couple. Three, two, one, and both with phone again. No jokes. Next couple, last one. Three, two, one, and we have the left one with a phone and the right one with a camera. I did this game with the exact same pictures on Instagram. And the answer was incredible. Like, I don't think there's anyone that got all the four couples right. And, and the reason is pretty simple because we don't know what we have in our pocket. We don't know the full potential of this. And therefore, if we don't know the full potential of this, then it's very difficult also to recognize because before phones were taking small pictures and you could easily recognize them. But today in the last five years, it's very, very difficult because we're looking at a screen. We're looking maybe at a TV and therefore, that dimension of that screen, it doesn't really matter if it's taken with a phone or with a camera. So one of the, the, the biggest false beliefs is that photography is hard. Well, let me tell you that it's not like this because you need to think of photography as a loads of different small rules that put together create a beautiful composition. So if you think photography is hard, well, I mean, it's hard, but it's hard like everything else. So if you learn these small rules, then, you're gonna create beautiful composition. And you don't even need to learn all of them because you can learn maybe five or six or seven that put together already create a very nice photo that can help you growing on social media or growing with sales or just, you know, have a, if you have an agency that takes care of this, maybe you can implement other photos, whatever. Need expensive gear? Well, I think I just demonstrated you that you don't need expensive gear because those photos taken with the phone are actually pretty good. So if we know how to use this, then you don't need expensive gear at all. Of course, if you need to do a campaign for whatever car automotive, Audi, maybe you need a little bit more, but the majority of, of cases of us that we own small businesses, then probably not. I'm not capable. Well, it's like starting a business. So of course you need to learn, right? It's not something that goes natural. It's like also like singing, but 
there is one key difference with businesses is that with photography, you don't need to reinvent anything. So everything is already out there. All the rules are out there. It's just about putting them together and just learn them. You don't need to learn them all at once. You can go slowly. Whereas when you start a business, as you probably know, you need to learn marketing, you need to learn finance, you need to learn how to hire people, and you need to really know all these things. Otherwise, your business is not going to go anywhere unless you hire other people. So it's not it's not difficult, and there's nothing to invent. And it's just about taking pictures, right? That's what the people say. But are you a business owner? Okay, let me tell you that if you know how to take pictures, as we demonstrated before, well, the restaurant, it can save you costs and time and a lot of costs because hiring external agencies is really expensive. Hiring me, hiring freelancers is really expensive. It can cost you also a lot of time because if you ask me today, I'm not going to come today to take your pictures. Maybe I'm going to come in a week. Whereas if you know how to take okay pictures, like not being a professional photographer, but you're going to save a lot of time because you can do it today and you can create what you have in mind. One of the biggest problems that I have when I talk with uh, brands is that they, they, it's very difficult for them to communicate the creative final result that they would like. And for me, it's kind of the same thing. It's difficult. I have an idea in mind. I have a creative process in mind, but it's difficult to communicate. Plus, products look more expensive. And this is, this is easy to say with that restaurant example. And we don't know if the first picture was with high quality materials, but you could definitely sell it for high quality materials because that's what our brain tells us with good photos. Plus you can have a lot of variety because you can take loads of pictures at the same time. Whereas if you work with me, I charge you maybe with uh, a number of photos per shooting, for example. Immediacy, because you can, you need a photo right now, you just go, bam, snap a picture, prepare the set. Whereas if you need to hire someone, maybe it's gonna be a week, two weeks, whatever. Social media recognition because recognition because social media is all about content. So if you have high quality content, you're gonna be recognized. Instead, if you have a great value, if you have a great product, but you cannot present it well, very difficult to grow on social media. You can tell stories because photos tell stories and you can increase your editing skills, which are very useful for loads of different uh, things. Plus one of the things that I'm most grateful of is having learned Photoshop in a very young age because it helped me so much in so many different situations. So what is the result of all of this benefits of taking pictures? You grow your brand and you increase sales. I really hope you, you got this concept because it's massive. Like usually we don't understand how important is this part uh, of, of the creative side, let's say. What if you are a freelancer or you just want to grow your online presence? Having good photos, knowing how to take good photos and can make you a very good first impression and can create your own portfolio. I use IG as my own portfolio and honestly is the one that is bringing me the most business. Plus you can charge more because if you have better photos, if you can present yourself better, people are going to take you more seriously and you're going to charge more. And it's easier to close the with brands because brands want all always they want great content so if you know how to take pictures you know content is all about photos and video so you get more clients you get more followers and obviously you increase sales that's the power of photography so now let's understand how we can set up so we have a product how we can set up the ideal setup like how we can find out ideas there is a book called persuasion by robert cialdini and cialdini is like a, a master in persuasion that I read and I suggest you read as well, which is very interesting. And he shows a study where basically he was comparing two people going on a website to buy a pillow. The first website was showcasing the pillow, the pillow with some clouds in the background. The second website was showcasing the pillow in another situation, not with the clouds. There is a tendency to buy that pillow with the clouds because of the unconscious connection that our brain makes with clouds and pillow. So that is like, it's like softer, it's like peaceful, it's like when you go to sleep, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like clouds. Whereas if there are no clouds, then okay, it's just a pillow, you might think of it, but then the key concept here is that we as human, we make unconscious judgments every single time. Every single time, like we did in the photograph between the, the two restaurants before, and also like with that with the smartphone versus camera. So the ideal setup is really about thinking about your business. What kind of objects, what kind of props can remind you of your business goal? So you gotta give it a meaning at every single element that you have in your photo. Like with the pillow and the clouds, maybe makeup 
I'm just saying like completely random out of nowhere. It could be associated because maybe makeup, you want to attract uh, boys or you want to attract you know, people. It could be associated with maybe just saying something random, some underwear because it's sexy, right? So just, and I wanna give you a few examples so we understand this concept more because that's the key of product photography. I had some uh, shoes at home and I wanted to uh, take a photo random, okay? Just with my phone. And I thought about Gucci, okay? So these are Gucci shoes. How can Gucci, what, what's the call of Gucci? What, what they want to communicate? So I said, okay, this is kind of like a vintage brand. They want, they want to be like powerful. So I thought, okay, maybe we put some gold and they want to be very special. So I put candles as like hot, even here, a little bit of sexy. I just want to show you the BTS very quickly, which is this one. Which is the TikTok and the reel that I posted. And this is the part that I want to show you because it's the, it's the moment where I created. And then just with a smartphone, I'm using a couple of lights, two, two on the right and two on the left, and then boom, that's the final shot. Next example is a bag, okay? My mom had this bag, she bought new this bag. I say, let's try to think of something cool that we can do. This is a black bag and has this leaf here on the left. So I said, okay, maybe this is like a little bit wild, a little bit of rebellion. So I decided, okay, let's put a lot of plants on the sides and let's try to put the bag in the middle. So it's like, you wanna feel part of something bigger. Your courage, you want like, you want to be a superhero, but at the same time hidden. And that's why you're like in the middle of the plants, but at the same time, you are the one that is in the center of the attention. And even here, I can show you uh, behind the scene on how we created this. So here we just put a lot of different plants around, put a few things in the back, put a background that was not too black and that's the final result. Even here, just with a phone. This is another campaign for a product. Even here, what I thought is like, okay, so these are shoes, these are black, but at the same time are yellow with a little bit of white. So it's like, this is something I want to hustle. This is like hustling in the night. It's like bold person, it's like a city dreamer, like dreaming a lot. So what I created is just I put some rocks because that's kind of off path, more like a dreamy person. And then got like some smoke and then try to create this kind of city, uh, city effect behind. And uh, uh, here is the behind the scene as well. So here I'm creating the city. I put some lights behind, then just the black plain uh, surface, a little bit of smoke even here. I love smoke, by the way. And that's the final result for the photos. This time it's not taken with a phone, it's taken with a camera, but that's the concept. And here's kind of like a video, like a commercial part at the end. All right, next example is a Dior campaign. Even here, I thought, okay, Dior, you wanna be unique, you wanna be special. So that's why I found, this is an ashtray that I found at home, in my girlfriend's home, actually. And, and the, the special part is that this texture is not the same in any part. So it's kind of like separated all the time. These are like little dots. There's no really uh, a repetition, even though it's a texture and there's symmetry. So that means symmetry, I imagine something powerful, something that you have under control what's going on but at the same time you have some curves. So I wanted to repeat these curves of this perfume and I put it on like that, that ashtray is like a, a big circle and it's really nice. Plus there's the contrast between the black and that single light. And that's why I want it to be unique because there is a light in the full black. And this is the behind the scene. And this uh, has been done with basically zero equipment. I, I used the camera and a very cheap Amazon light that I'll show you which one will be afterwards. There was nothing, just that hash trait and a light. But I feel, I think that image is pretty powerful. And this is kind of a budget zero, so. So here's the key concept. You need to give it a meaning and, and you'll be rewarded. And this is also the association that we have with Taylor Brands. If you'll be able to use that kind of powerful uh, personal branding and you associate yourself with great content, great photos, your, your business is gonna grow. Like there's no other way. So you just need to find small little objects. You don't need big spaces. I've shown you all the behind the scenes. You can use a corner if something small, you can use a plain uh, wall. 
And yes, plain background are always best. So try to avoid things behind uh, because it just make it, it make it, it makes it a little bit easier. And now we go in depth about talking how to set up your smartphone. So when the iPhone 12 came out, Apple, there was a big, big like talk about raw photos because the iPhone 12 shot, uh, can shoot raw photos. What does that mean? Well, there is a huge difference in photography between raw and JPG. Consider that if you have a smartphone, whatever smartphone you have, if you don't have that option, if you don't have like the latest one, and if you don't use the app that I'll show before, it's gonna shoot JPG. JPG is a small file, it's around four, five, six megabytes. Whereas raw is a huge file about, if you're shooting with a phone, my, I have an iPhone 11 and this one shoots around 25 to 30 megabytes. That means six times ish bigger. If you have a bigger image, that means you have much more information inside that image and therefore you're gonna have much more options comparing to a JPG. So imagine you have uh, colors, right? So JPG, you can choose between one and 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Whereas if you have a raw file, you'll be able to choose from one to 100. So for every unit in JPG, you'll be able to have 10 choices in raw. And that's a massive difference. That's what makes mobile photography so powerful because nowadays you can shoot in raw with Lightroom Mobile. This is an app that is free. Lightroom is the most common um, software editing software which has a mobile version. And with that mobile version on the top here, you'll be able to choose DNG format or JPG. DNG format is basically the raw version of uh, shooting with a smartphone whereas the JPG is a normal JPG. So what you wanna do is you want to shoot with the internal camera of Lightroom, okay? So you download this app, it's free, has a premium version, not necessary, although it's suggested. I think it really adds something to it, but I, I've been using the free version for, for more than two years. And one of the downsides is that it has an internal gallery. So whenever you're using the internal camera of the app, and shooting in DNG, it has an internal gallery. Therefore, means that whenever you're shooting a picture, you need to go within the app, and you don't gonna have, you're not gonna have in your normal gallery that photo. Plus, Lightroom Mobile allows to have a full editing uh, capabilities, from colors to lighting to presets, everything. So that's the go-to app for mobile photography. You don't want to use anything else. If you have an iPhone 12. I suggest what you can do if you want, and if you don't want to use this, this app to shoot, is that you shoot raw with your iPhone 12, and then you import the photo in Lightroom, and then you're going to edit in Lightroom. Therefore, you're just going to use Lightroom to shoot the pictures directly. Second app that I suggest is called Snapseed, and this is a Google app, and it's completely free and has loads of different options, including the healing function, which is the one that I use the most. And this allows to remove people, remove reflections, remove whatever unwanted objects you have in your picture, directly just with a tap. So you click healing and then you just need to drag your finger on whatever you want to remove and that's gone. Consider that sometimes it's not possible to remove things unless you know how to use Photoshop very well because there are, depending on what's around. If what's around that object is the same, is similar, then this will work 90% of the time. If you have a pick, if you have a, a person in the middle of other people and you want to remove just one person, it's not going to be possible because everything else around is uh, is different. Plus, has loads of local adjustments, uh, which are very useful because just with a finger you can drag up and down. In Lightroom, you can have local adjustments, but that's in the premium version. Third app, my favorite one, is lens lens distortion. This in product photography might be not as useful, but I've used it quite a few times, and this allows to allow to add overlays on top of it, like flares, reflection, beams, clouds, snow, rain, uh, glass reflection, has cool filters inside, and obviously in the free version is, is limited options, but you can still use it. I've recently upgraded it to premium because I wanted to try it, and I love it. I think it's, it's absolutely worth it because it's, like, it's, not, it's not expensive at all. Now let's talk about lightning. In products, lighting is the most important part. Now we have, we need to recognize when we are using the right lighting or not. And just to give you a little bit of understanding, there are three kind of main parts of lighting. There are the shadows, which are the black parts, let's say. There are the midtones, which uh, which are everything that is not shadows or highlights. And then there are the highlights, which are towards the white. But then there is a problem. And here when is when we recognize that we have a problem is that when we see pitch black, where it shouldn't be, 
That means that we have no information. We lost all the details, and this is not okay. On the other hand, we have pure white, and that means we have no information. This is not okay. So our goal is try to not having any pitch black or any pure white in our photo unless you really want it. So if, you want, if you're doing a black background photo like I did with the Dior perfume, then obviously I wanted to have it pitch black because I didn't want to have any information. But what happens is that when you want to shoot a product, these are just, you know, just to let you understand, then this is not okay. Left is not okay because it's too bright. You're burning. That's, that's kind of the technical term. You're burning your photo, okay? This is pure white. There's no detail. I cannot read the, the text. This is not okay. We don't want that. And this is too dark because this is completely pitch black. Like I, I, I cannot really read much. Like this is not okay. So we want to stay in the middle. But how can we stay in the middle? Well, we stay in the middle by controlling the exposure. And usually this is like a, an iPhone screenshot, but I think it's exactly the same thing in Android. You just need to click on that element and then you drag up and down to regulate the exposure. As a general rule, the more light, the better, because um, smartphones, they have a very little sensor. That means that in low light uh, conditions, they perform pretty badly. So you never, never want to take photos when there's not enough light. You want to have as much light as possible. If you want a dark picture, you just drag down the exposure with um, just clicking and then you drag down and the exposure is going to go down. If you're shooting outside, best times are sunset or sunrise because the light is very soft. Plus there is another reason, if you shoot at 12, when the sun is right on top of you, you and you're shooting people, you're gonna have a lot of harsh light here. So there's a harsh shadows. And usually because your eyes are always the subject, if you have shadows on your eyes, that is not okay. Plus also when you're shooting products, you don't wanna go on a harsh light. Because of this reason, harsh light is when you have a very neat shadow, like in this pier right here. And 95% of the time mm, doesn't look really good unless it's made on purpose. Now, this image is made on purpose and looks good because this is, this is an edited picture because I can see that here is not burned and for, for a few reasons. But just I wanted to let you know what is the harsh shadows, what's kind of the neat shadows um, against the soft lighting, which doesn't have a neat shadow like right here. So it's always best to be here, but how can you achieve this kind of result? Well, you can stay, whenever there is a lot of sun, you can just stay in the shadow. So last year when there was lockdown and I was you know, just locked in the house, I didn't have any professional equipment, no lights, nothing, just my camera. I was just using very um, a window very close to me and then a white wall. And this is gonna be the result when you're just not in harsh light. Or if you're in harsh light, or if you have like a very strong lamp at home that you wanna use for product photography, you can use some baking, uh, baking paper. Super, super useful, great for diffusion. That's the key word, diffusion. We need to diffuse the light and our products will look more expensive. Now let's talk about composition. So you have a lot of objects or you're thinking, okay, I have this object, I have that one, I have that, the other one, blah, blah, blah. How can I put them together in that corner with that light that is diffused? Well, there are a lot of rules. And of course, in this webinar, I cannot go through them all because there are way too many. And, and there are already like a few of, of them like are here on the right. You got symmetry, you got Fibonacci, Pyrrol, and a lot of them. But the most common one is the rule of thirds, which is the one that you see right here. And how does that work? Is basically dividing in nine different boxes, your images, and in thirds. And you want to balance the picture based on these. So in this case, we have one third of the pavement one third ish of the church and one third of the sky. That's why the picture is balanced. Plus the rule of third says that you shouldn't put your object in the middle, but you should put it in the crossing lines or along the vertical lines or along uh, any kind of line, even the horizontal one could be fine in some, some cases. Therefore, when we have the rule of thirds, we don't want the object in the middle, which is the classic one and could be a right for product photography, but we wanna have maybe on the side. This is one of the rules. There are so many out there. And uh, for product photography, it's also fine to have it in the center, but it really depends. But just this to let you know that there are ways and you can just use these grids to understand where to put your objects. Plus there are some other rules, which is the rule of odds. Whenever you have an object or whenever you're shooting product photography, it's always better to have odds numbers. So 
you know, you got three, three objects, five, seven might be too much, but try to not stay with two or try different angles. So you want to try maybe uh, from, from the top or you want to try from the bottom, you want to try on the left, on the right. In product photography, generally, the tendency is to shoot straight. So on the product line, because if you're shooting up, or down, you're gonna distort your product, and this is maybe is an effect that you don't want, but it really depends on case to case. And then you wanna to try to create layers. Depth. So you want an object in the middle, one in the back, and maybe one in the front. Therefore, you're gonna create layers. Uh, photography is a, lot, is a lot about depth. And then you can try also top down, so kind of like flat lay photography, and you can try to use some texture or some repetition in order to create a composition that centers the attention to a single element. Here are some uh, um, some photos. For example, in this case, there are in the top left, I don't know if you see my pointer, in the top left one, there is a case for iPhone and there are a lot of layers here. So there is this part in the front, which is blurred. There are some uh, leaves and then there's also a blurred part in the background, whereas the case is unfocused. And this creates depth. As you can see, there are one, two, at least three layers, but we can identify even more. Second photo, as we said before, this is like whatever, I don't know what it is, sorry. I don't know what it is, maybe a calming kind of CBD something. And here we see uh, some lemon. So basically that, that taste is lemon, I can tell you. Okay, so that's why we use that object. And there's also a plant. So this is kind of calming, there's a tea. So you got like a 5 p.m. tea and then you're chilling and with some sweets, some biscuits. So every element here is thought to be in the picture. Plus you create layers because you have your product and you have the plant and then you have the lemons in the back and the background. So these are like even five layers or so. On the watch, we have a top down photo. So even in this case, you try to use objects that are matching whatever you're shooting. So if you have that black because the, the watch is black, then you're using the, the passport cover, which is black, you use a black pen, you use the sunglasses and all the things. This is top down flat lay photography. And then the last one, you just probably some water or you're selling the bottle. And even here you have the rule of arts because you have one, two, three, four, five pieces of oranges outside. Next thing is about power of template. So let's say you've got a great composition, you've got some lighting, you've got you know a good good raw photo. Then how you can enhance it even more is using templates. So in this case, I named three apps, which is Unfold, Photoshop, and Pixar, that I use quite often to take uh, my product photos to the next level, or just using some different templates. Or Unfold, for example, is used for stories, so it makes your story pretty elegant, very simple, but you don't need complicated things. Photo Room is more for product photography, so if you have an e-commerce, if you're starting out with these things, is amazing because it's basically a background remover. So whatever you, object you have. It removes the background and it applies all these filters, which are pretty cool. And PixArt is like Photoshop for a smartphone. Very complicated, but if you master PixArt, you're gonna be you're gonna be crazy because you can literally it's like Photoshop for for a smartphone. Really, really powerful. Now, what's the secret for editing product photos? Well, you're gonna be surprised because the secret is keeping it natural as possible. So you just need to have the right light because you don't want to edit any product photo with different colors with like weird stuff you just you just want to keep it natural because you don't want to modify your product otherwise you're going to disappoint your customer so products re really require editing what you can do eventually is that within lightroom there are some kind of they're presets actually they're called profiles and these are very soft filters try them because i really like them you want to control exposure that's the most important part you don't want to edit your pictures with like whatever colors you just want to edit your phone in perfect lighting therefore when you have in lightroom if, you, if your photo is overexposed, that means it's towards white and there are some parts that are burned, then you want to decrease the highlights. Whereas if it's too black, then maybe you want to increase the shadows. Therefore, you're gonna bring back these details. And you want to absolutely avoid over editing. There are these five sliders that are overused by beginners a hundred times. So what you wanna do, keep these rules for these five sliders, okay? texture, clarity, and vibrance and saturation, which beginners love. I don't know, I love them as well. Now I understand the concept, but keep them between minus 10 and plus 10, maximum, all the time. 
then there is another part that could be consistency. So let's say you want to grow uh, your Instagram. It's always nice to have a nice feed, right? So not like random photos, but something like the same colors where you can use some presets. And whenever you're editing a photo in Lightroom, you can save these settings so that you can apply these settings to any other photo. So in Lightroom, you have the option presets, and then you can create um, you can create new ones based on the editing that you've done, or you can download from the internet, you can purchase, you can do whatever you want. Plus, I have a free uh, Noble preset pad that contains five mobile presets that you can download for free at this link. So just take a screenshot of this, and then you're gonna go afterwards and you can download it for, for free. There's also an installation guide inside, so you can just uh, read the installation guide, it's pretty simple. Now, okay, light is the most important part. What light should you get? There are a few tier of based on your budget. Let's start by the basic one that you all know, 100% of you know already, and it's their ring light. I use the brand Joby because I'm an ambassador, global ambassador for them. And this is $29 and is super, super good. It's a 12 inch ring light. And let me tell you that ring lights are amazing. Like the lights they produce for that price is just mind blowing. So if you have a ring light, it's fine. But what I really suggest you, if you want to upgrade your photos, is that you go for kind of the cheap Amazon softbox. And these are like, there are tons of brands that do this, but whatever looks like this, it's fine. These are around 50 or they sell it like in couple for 80 or something like this. And they make a huge, huge, huge difference. I've been using this for basically all my growth on, on TikTok until, until last January, when actually Nanlight sponsored me uh, with some professional lighting. So the cheap Amazon soft hook is if you have a business or if you want to grow, if you do whatever you do, if you like lifestyle, just amazing, amazing, amazing. Whatever brand doesn't really matter. But then if you want to go, of course, to the next level, then we go to the Nylex Forza 60, which is a small light, which is a portable one that I put in my bag every single time and has a soft box. So it has a very, very powerful light. And then we've got a um, next level, which is the Forza 200. And this is kind of like the very professional tier for professional photography, professional product photography, professional whatever it is. This is seven, $700. I do think it's worth it because the difference between a ring light and a Forza 200 is the power. So a ring light can illuminate, let's say 50 centimeters. An Amazon softbook illuminate you one meter. So if you have some part of photos, this could be already right. But if you need to make some videos in a room, that's not enough. It's not going to reach you. And the same thing is the Forza 60. This one gives you maybe two meters and the Forza 200 give you, gives you five to seven meters. So that's the difference. Now it's game time. Can you guess which photo is taken with the ring light? Which one is taken with the cheap, cheap Amazon software and which one is taken with the Forza 200 $700? I'll give you 10 seconds and you let me know which one is ring light, which one is cheap software, and which one is professional light. Just write down your paper or write in the chat would be great, but I can't really see the chat, so it doesn't really matter. It's 10 seconds from now. Okay, three, two, one, and time is up. All right. The result are that the first one is a ring light. The second one is a cheap software, $50, uh, whatever, Amazon. And the third one is a professional light. As you can see, maybe the first one you can see that is taken with the phone with a very, like with the ring light, but the difference between the second one and the third one, I'm not really sure, okay? So if you don't believe that this one was taken with the ring light, I show you in this uh, link, maybe take a screenshot of this one as well. This is a YouTube video where I show you how to take black background photos exactly like this with your phone, with whatever light you have. It's pretty simple. They're very dramatic. They're very cool. Here is another example of a photo that I just took with a green, with a with a ring light, and I created depth using this flamingo in the foreground. But then, as you can see, the ring light has to be as close as possible to whatever object you're shooting. If, if you're shooting a person, if you're shooting an object, the light has to be very, 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 very close, as close as possible. Sometimes I keep. The ring light, if I shoot it with a ring light, even in frame, and then I remove it. Actually, now that I remember here, there was the softbox. So in this part, I hope you can see the pointer. I'm just checking the middle photo. And then on my basically left side, there was a white kind of strip because it was, it was in frame, the light. But having it that close made me have, basically helped me having this very, very soft shadows in my face, which makes the photo looking professional. All right, these are some other photos. 
Uh, on the left, we have some punk grenade. Even this, these are all taken without any professional lighting. This is just window when I was in, in the lockdown uh, a year ago. So there's nothing like nothing crazy, but these are good already for if you have a you know if you have a restaurant. These are good already if you want to showcase your chocolate, your dark chocolate with some strawberries. If you want to show if you have a jewelry e-commerce, this could be a right. Very simple, but sometimes this is what you need. Simple things, and then there is a burger. Um, that I think it looks pretty nice. All right, is anyone excited? Well, I am because I hope I was able to pass you the 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 power, really the power of of this guy that you ever hear and the power of photography in general because it can really 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 helps you a lot in whatever business you have. And a phrase from Bernard Brown: In order for connection to happen, we have to allow ourselves to be seen, really seen. That means just put content out there. Sometimes when we hire, let's say, uh, outsiders, when we are freelancers, we are agencies, we don't have enough content. Just like put out, put out, put out, put out, put out. And if you know how to take basic photos, then you'll be able really to make this thing happen. So that's pretty much it. I just want to let you know that if you don't, if you want to know more in mobile photography, because of course in this webinar, I kind of give you a little bit of touch. I made you understand the power of it, but obviously I couldn't go in depth about a few things. And just because of this webinar, just for tailors, I have a 50% off on my essential mobile photography course where there are 16 modules about it. I show you how to frame correctly of photos. I talk about depth. I talk about, talk about focus and my editing workflow for photos in composition, colors, details, everything. I show you in depth all the app that I've shown you before that I mentioned them and how to use them properly how to shoot portraits, natural landscape, creative photography, and how to start a business with a content creation, extra pieces of gear, and loads of other things. So if you want to check it out, I suggest you do so at the, my website, www.simoneferretti.net. And then you can use this code here, Sphero50, to get a 50 off. You usually sell this one for 59. Um, now I'm just selling for 29. Plus, obviously, Check out my social media. I post a lot on YouTube and on Instagram. Now, a little bit less on TikTok, but the first two are my kind of main focus. And I really give a lot of, lot of tips because all my content is based on education, kind of educate you on how to take great photos or great videos, grow a business with these things. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'd like to take any questions that you might have. <laughs> Um, great. First of all, Simona, I have to say, um, we're just getting a lot of feedback in the chat. Yeah, okay, back. great. Okay. So yeah, so we're, we're getting some great feedback in the chat. Um, everyone is super excited. I have to say, even I'm like, I mean, I just came here to, you know, be part of the webinar, but I was like, oh, I'm going to go buy that light and I'm going to try uh, just photographing things. This was super cool. Um, and I can tell like, just from what everyone's saying in the comments, like people really, really learned a lot. Um, so thank you. And yeah, if we have time for a couple questions, um, we got a bunch in the yep, chat. Sure. sure. Okay. So I'm going to just scroll down a bit. Um, and also for everyone, um, just in case you didn't screen grab that slide, um, your, the offer for Simone's courses um, should be up on your screens and the coupon code is there. Um, okay. So the first question I saw from Leslie was, I'm a very small business and I can't afford the cost of Photoshop. Um, do you have a recommendation of something that might be less expensive? So there is a tool on, in, on, on just on the web that is called Photopea. I believe it's called just photopea.com. I think it's that one. And it's basically Photoshop for free. So it's the exactly, exactly copy of Photoshop and it's free. So obviously you need to learn Photoshop, um, which might be not that easy because it has a lot of complicated things, but that is a, is a super useful app. Plus, as I mentioned before, you can check out Pixar as well, mm. because with just with mobile, you can do so many things. It's crazy. I've seen people doing like crazy things with Pixar. Um, cool. Thank you. Um, OK, we got a question from Ashley who asked, if you only have a few seconds to take a picture, what is your process? What features do you use on your phone? Do you use photo or portrait? Um, Always, always, as I mentioned, Lightroom Mobile is really, is really makes the fact that you can shoot in RAW or like DNG, whatever you want, it makes a huge difference, uh, both on the quality of the photo and on the editing. 
plus on the editing, as I mentioned, you can, if it's very quick and I usually do for stories, I don't take like hours to edit a picture for stories. I use these presets. So I have my own presets and you can also get these, these five. I hope you guys took a picture. Otherwise we can maybe send the link in the, um, in the chat. And, um, and with the presets is basically a set of settings and, and colors that is applied automatically. So I don't need to go and edit anything. And I have a few of them, obviously I have more than 40 presets and, uh, and that makes the process 10 second process. Um, cool. So yeah, guys, if, if you haven't already, um, make sure presets become part of your process. Um, just from everything you said, it sounds like super, um, like it will help shorten the time a lot, um, yeah, which a is lot. super cool. Um, okay, we got a question when you were talking about lighting um, from John about bright light. So he said, um, I photograph photos outside for my garden sites and the sunlight distorts some of the pictures. So how do you modify light, I guess, when you're outside for like optimal pictures? Yeah, we, we touched a little bit uh, on this before, but the concept is try never have a harsh light. So direct sun, just try to avoid it. What you can do is that you can use the baking paper or a bed sheet. So whatever is white and let the, the, um, the light shine through, whatever makes shadow, it's, it's great because that's gonna soften the light so much and it's gonna help you increase the level of, of the photo 10 times. Directly, when you have like the sun that is hitting directly your product, there is a very high chance that it's gonna create this pure white part of the product which basically is no information and makes the picture just looking not good because when you're shooting a product and you, you know you want to see the product you don't want white parts or you don't want bitch black part um i think that was my my favorite tip that i picked up from this was the baking sheet uh tip that's so smart and i feel right. like everyone has them and brilliant it's, it's great and, and to be honest like what happened is that a couple of months ago so i travel a lot between italy and london all my equipment is in italy right now i'm in london and usually I bring that small light right but then i forgot the diffuser of the light and, and i was just like oh my god this is the most important part like i was just i use baking paper and i did the whole two months register all my videos all my instagram all my youtube just with baking paper on top of that light so absolutely uh mind-blowing yeah Brilliant, so great. For jewelry photography, how do you make items floating, like in that floating ring picture that you showed um, earlier? Right, so that's kind of like, um, there is a little bit of, a little bit of editing. Mm -hmm. That editing could be done also with Snapseed and Pixar. What happens is that I was holding the ring with, one, with two fingers on one side, snap a picture, okay, with the phone on a tripod, and then I change it hands. So from the other side, then snap another picture. And what you do is you take the half that has no fingers of the two photos. Then you put them together and, and you get the, the kind of floating thing. If you want to have the shadow, if you want to have this shadow uh, here at the bottom of the ring, you need to have a light that is coming from the top. So in this case, what I, what I did is I asked my girlfriend to hold the light on top. It was actually an iPhone light, like whatever smartphone light you have, a spotlight on the top. And therefore it's gonna create the shadow because what happens is that if you just do the jewelry up here uh, floating, the effect is not as nice as you have uh, the shadow as well. So in this case, you know, when you take the first picture, you're gonna see a finger here as well, and then you're gonna see another finger here as well. Then when you're precise enough, and this might take a lot of trials, um, then you combine the two parts and then you get this picture. Wow, okay, we're getting, we got a lot of comments in the, in the chat that this is brilliant and this is a really great, uh, this is super cool. Um. <laughs> thank you guys, thank you guys. I hope, I hope you really understood the power of, of this guy. You, you have it written in your pocket. Um, yeah, thank you so, so much. I am, I'm seeing a couple more questions. So, um, guys, first of all, like you can always check out, um, Simone, his website, I think is, is up in addition to his course. Um, and a lot of people have been asking about the webinar recording and if you didn't grab screenshots or whatever, don't worry. Um, a recording of the webinar will be sent to everyone. Um, I think by tomorrow or in the next like day or two. Um, so, so you'll have all this and you can check back and, Really, yeah, Simone, thank you so much. This was super interesting um, and super inspiring. And yeah, it was like so great to have you. And we still have so many people who joined an hour ago. 
which just tells you that, uh, yeah, but this is super nice. valuable. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. I hope I wasn't too boring. And if you have <laughs> any kind of questions, you can write me on, on Instagram. I reply literally to everyone. Might take a few days because I have a lot of requests, but I really reply to everyone because I try to keep the community there as well. So yeah, just uh, have a look at this um, mobile photography course. Might be very useful for, for whatever business or even personal growing your audience. And um, and on the top right, I think you should see my handles on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. So I'll see you there. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you so much. Um, everyone have a great day from wherever you're turning in from or have a great night. Um, and yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for and thank coming. You, thank you, Taylor Brent as well for hosting me. Of course, of course. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. All right. Bye, everyone.